This was the tweet that started it all. What exactly do I mean by it all? Well, you might not know of this since I haven't really posted on my YouTube channel at all, but I have been working on a game called Lost Canvas. The Palette Party series, though, you might be familiar with. In fact, another game that I posted on this channel actually is related to the Palette Party series, which is actually not called the Palette Party series anymore. It is, in fact, the Palette Polycule series, which I will <laughs> not be explaining at the current moment. But basically, it's just a bunch of blobs of paint that move around. The reason I decided to make it a bunch of blobs of paint moving around is much for the same reason that uh, the original Paper Mario is, you know, Paper Mario. The N64 had a lot of limitations, and deciding to go with a sort of paper aesthetic for the whole game would save a lot on resources, because you don't need 3D models to render paper, you can just have a 2D sprite. And similarly, Game Maker sucks, and honestly, using Game Maker even on a modern PC kind of feels like you're, you know, <laughs> stepping into the N64 days, at least when it comes to 3D games. Game Maker is not at all equipped to handle 3D games, it's mostly meant for 2D games. However, I was stubborn and decided to go with Game Maker anyway instead of, you know, even attempting to learn another game engine. This was, in some ways, a massive mistake. But it was also, in other ways, kind of a blessing in disguise. Because it was this decision that, in the long run, ended up actually motivating me to finally switch engines. I actually started developing Lost Canvas immediately after I made this short thread. And I continued developing Lost Canvas all the way from late October to early December. Not even two months. Not even a month and a half, really. However, in just that month and a half, I would make actually pretty substantial progress. And today, I just want to document that. I want to show you all what I've made in Game Maker. Of course, right now it's kind of old news. This was more than a year and a half ago. However, now that I've rebooted Gloss Canvas using the Godot engine, I wanted to take a look back at what I made in Game Maker and show it off a bit. So what better way to start than with basic movement? And if you know the first thing about game design, you know that collision is especially difficult. And it took me a long while to get it working. And in the end, there were still bugs. Mostly because Game Maker doesn't actually compensate for a third Z axis. As I mentioned before, Game Maker is for 2D games, meaning it works primarily in an X and Y axis, and if you want to use a third axis, you basically have to program that yourself. You have to come up with all the functions, you have to make all the calculations, you have to do all of that from scratch, and Game Maker will not hold your hand for that. This should have been my first sign that maybe it was a bad idea to stick with Game Maker. However, you know, stubborn me decided to keep going anyway. Then after that I added some blobby physics, then I added some colors to the blobs, then I added some sounds, and then finally, I downloaded Counter-Strike Source. Now you'll no longer have to look at ugly pink and black dev textures, you're welcome. Then I took a quick break from all that to work on the battle arena. It was a big roulette, surrounded in poker chips and cars and dice and all that fun stuff. I always loved the vibe that casino levels and video games gave off. I especially loved the, uh, the sort of feeling that you got when you were playing uh, the one casino level. I believe it was called Gamble Game Gallery in Super Mario 64 Last Impact. That level is notorious for being one of the worst, if not the worst, levels in that ROM hack. However, I still liked the aesthetic of it. And I also had a lot of nostalgia for not only the Mario Sunshine casino level in Serena Beach, but also the Luigi minigames, the, the card minigames that you would play in Super Mario 64 DS. That was my childhood. And going back to that, feeling that again was one of my motivations for this because, you know, it wasn't really good press to make casinos and children's games, so they just kind of stopped. But I still really like the aesthetic, even if in real life casinos are probably pretty terrible places. After working on the battle arena, I decided to take a break from that and work on stairs. Which, uh certainly were a thing. And then I, uh, I fixed it. It's good enough, right? It's good enough. That's how stairs work. I'm pretty sure. Then I decided to liven up the place a bit with some collectibles. We got the, uh, the paintlets, which are just cones on top of spheres. We got the poker chips and the tokens, which are just cylinders. 
But that's all Game Maker could really handle, and it wasn't terrible. It worked. And then I decided to take a break from that. I have a very short attention span and made the title screen. Which I'm actually to this day still kind of proud of. It looks really great, especially for Game Maker. This is no doubt the best looking thing I have ever made in Game Maker. Of course, whenever I make the title screen in the Godot version of Lost Canvas, it will most certainly look 10 times better, if not 50 times better. However, I'm still partial to this version. It gives kind of an old timey feel. It seems more like an like an early 2000s or maybe even late 90s game, which is actually kind of the feeling I wanted to encapsulate in the first place. I know this is a bit of a weird example, but the uh, Sorry PC game from the early 2000s, that was actually one of my reference points for what I wanted this game to feel like. That was also a game that I played a lot of when I was younger with my siblings. I mainly just like the funny animations, but it really has that feeling of just early 2000s nostalgia. And that's why I think I'll still remain partial to this title screen, even after I make a better looking version in Godot. Then after that, I made Collision with Circular Objects. Believe it or not, that's actually something that's very hard to do in Game Maker. I had to do a bunch of stuff with sine, cosine, and that stuff. And I'm lucky I paid attention in Calculus, because it actually ended up working pretty well in the end. Then I made the pause menu, which wasn't hard. I just had to repurpose the code from the title screen and put it into the actual gameplay itself. Only difference is I actually had to make the players stop moving. I had to pause their movement, you know, all that jazz. Then after that, I linked the title screen and the test world together. However, I am very, very sorry to admit that I have committed one of the greatest sins that you can commit in game design. This is a fake loading screen. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, okay? I, I wanted the feel. I, want, I wanted the vibe. I needed the vibe, you know? I needed the vibe. And a loading screen with that little low frame rate spinning poker chip, that was just what I needed. I didn't make it last too long, you know, only like three seconds. But yeah, it's it's still a fake loading screen. And don't worry, I won't have any fake loading screens in the actual version of the game. So then I added a save block, then I added the HUD, which was about time. And then I increased the moveset. If you press shift on the ground, you can turn yourself into a, a cube. I'd say it's crouching, but it doesn't really look like crouching, but I'll still refer to it as crouching regardless because I make the rules, it's my game, shut up. If you jump while crouching, you do a sort of spring jump that rockets you all the way up into the air, and then if you crouch in the air, you do a sort of ground pound. Now if you ground pound, and two frames after hitting the ground, you jump again, you bunny hop. And this was an effort to make the game a little bit more speed game friendly. Usually RPGs aren't exactly the friendliest to speedrunners, and I thought I should fix that up a bit, at least for this game in particular. And now it was time to get into the real meat of things. I moved the pause menu, the HUD, and the moveset, everything in the moveset except for bunny hopping though, into the battle arena. And this was of course in preparation to make the actual battles themselves, which were kind of inspired by Undertale. In that game, you moved around and dodged obstacles. However, I actually got the idea for the circular arena from Paper Mario Origami King of all games, and especially the boss battles, which I actually kind of liked. Overall, the battle system in Paper Mario Origami King leaves a lot to be desired. However, the boss battles were actually kind of nice. But you know, the only really thing I copied from that is just having the enemy in the center and you move in circles around it. But I still found it an interesting enough concept to use regardless. So the first part of the actual battle system itself was to make the battle options, and I decided to go the Mario and Luigi route of having these little battle blocks that you jump into to select. There's the primary attack, there's the secondary attack, you can use your items, your cars, or you can flee. I also applied your stats to the game, at least the ones I could at the present moment, all of those stats being health, ink, defense, attack, speed, and luck. So then I programmed the primary attack, which is just a standard jump attack attack, similar to the Mario Luigi games, where the character would just jump onto the enemy. And as soon as the character actually hits the enemy's head, you would press the button. And the better your timing, the more damage you would do. However, if you are even one frame late on that timing, you get a miss, which means you only do 5% damage, which is 1 20th of what you would have done if you had gotten a perfect. 
And after the primary attack, what else to follow but the secondary attack? And this was supposed to be sort of similar to the hammer attack from the Mario & Luigi games, where it's just a single timing, which is a bit more strict, but if you can land that one timing, you get to do a hefty chunk of damage. And then of course, the enemy has to be able to attack you. So I added a damage system, which would have taken into account your defense. And after I had that all working, I made the first enemy, which is... a Yatsai. Yes, all the names were, and in fact still will be, puns. So sue me. Again, this is my game. I make the rules. It had two attacks, the falling dice attack and the wave dice attack. It was, of course, a beginner enemy, so it was very easy to dodge its attacks, which was, you know, intentional. It's like a Goomba, it's not actually gonna hurt you that badly, just meant to teach you the ropes. However, the first boss, King Yatsai, is a different story altogether. When I first made King Yatsai, it was actually way, way too difficult. And I ended up actually nerfing King Yatsai later, because it was just too damn hard. It was an absolute menace. It had upgraded versions of the falling and wave dice attacks, both with bigger dice, lasting longer, and moving faster. It also had two new attacks, which were the sort of hopping dice and also the spinny dice. Those little tiny dice that spin around really fast and it was actually really, really annoying. And I actually ended up removing that later, right before the game kicked the bucket, which we'll talk about later. Then after that, I added items. You can eat food, you can eat dessert, or you can drink alcohol. There were also buffs and debuffs. Any stat could be buffed or debuffed aside from health or ink because those two are sort of exhaustible resources. So I didn't really think it would make sense to have them be able to be buffed or debuffed. And after I had that done, I had the XP and leveling system working. And of course, with that came the victory condition, whereas a flagpole would raise up out of the center, and a flag on that flagpole would raise up the flagpole in accordance to how much XP you got from that enemy. Now, if you know about the Mario Luigi RPG games, is basically just a rehashed version of what would happen when you actually are victorious in a battle in those games. The roulette, however, is a bit different. I decided to copy the idea of being able to upgrade a certain desired stat using a little roulette. However, this time, instead of a roulette, it's a slot machine. I eventually changed the first slot speed to make it so that you could actually react to it and fairly easily get the desired result you wanted from it, which would typically be plus two. The second slot could also be reacted to, however, it was a bit faster, so you'd really need good reaction time for that one. The third slot, however, there's no chance of you reacting to that. So it'll basically just be random, whatever you get. And then after that was the last thing I coded, which was death. Yeah, it's uh, quite ironic that the last thing I managed to code in the game was dying. Taking enough damage to die, to stop living. Uh, and that's ironic because this was the point where the game just decided to stop functioning. It would start running at 5 FPS now for some inconceivable reason. I tried as hard as I could to find out the reason why this happened, and I still don't know the reason why. I never figured out why the game started running so poorly at this point. It was basically unplayable, and I just couldn't work on it anymore. So I stopped. And in fact, that was the last thing I ever made in GameMaker, was just death, <laughs> was coding the death function. In fact, I didn't work on a single game at all in the entire year of 2021. And especially with the continued onslaught of COVID, I would mainly just move on to other things in my life. But finally, in January of 2022, I decided to start looking for another engine to learn, and I came across Godot. And for the last roughly five months, I have completely remade Lost Canvas in Godot. So what have I managed to accomplish in that time? Well, let me show you. And here it is. Here is the new build of the game in Godot. I'm actually in the game itself, as in I'm recording this live and I don't have a script with me, so I'll do my best to explain what I have so far. The first thing you'll notice, of course, is that it looks a lot better. The second thing you'll notice is that the character actually has a little bit more substance to it. All of the characters do. There's multiple. That one is Rusty. This is Ginger, Amber, Jade, Sky, Azure, Violet, Rose, Pearl, and Blake. 
they're all actually unique and aren't just the same blob, just in different colors. And they all have unique abilities as well, or at least they will once I finish programming them. Rusty has the sort of fire breath ability. He also has flame float, which sort of acts like a jetpack. Ginger is very floaty. She has low gravity. She can also go through grates. However, there are no grates in this hub world, so I can't really show you that right now. There is also Amber here, who can sprint. And I really like this animation. I spent, spent quite a bit on the animation. I really like it. And Amber can also interact with electric objects. Then there is Jade, who can, has this sort of gas breath, can spit gas, and also use bombs. Then next there is Sky. Unfortunately from Sky onwards I haven't actually programmed in any of their abilities yet. However, I can tell you what I plan for them. Sky will be able to swim. Azure will be able to hold things, pick them up, put them down, throw them, that sort of stuff. Violet will be able to double jump and will be able to use wind to her advantage. Rose will be able to open up an umbrella and float around, sort of like Peach in Smash Bros. And she will also have a frying pan that she can whack things with. Pearl will be able to dash in the air, and Pearl also emits light. And the light from Pearl illuminates a bunch of platforms around, so if there's a dark area, then you can use Pearl to traverse it. Then lastly, there is Blake. Blake is sort of like a lead blob, very, very heavy. He also has a hammer that he will be able to use to whack things. Whereas Rose's frying pan swings from side to side, Blake's hammer will swing up and down. So if there's any buttons on the ground, then Blake can press those, and if there's any levers on the wall, then Rose can flip those. So they actually are different. They won't be just the same thing reskinned. And then of course there is the hub world itself, which is coming along nicely. It's not even close to finished. However, it does look a lot better than the testing world of the original Game Maker build of Lost Canvas. You've got this sort of spinning dice statue in the front. You also have these big poker chips on the sides of the, the main room. You've got these poker tables, some normal tables. You've got some dice in the corner. You've got some uh, little spotlights on the ground. You've got this paintlet block here, which actually does give you paintlets. And uh, once it's out, then it, it just gives you a little sound indicating that it's out. There's a save block, which actually doesn't do anything at the current moment, but it don't worry, it will. It will eventually. There is the first world here, Casino Countertop. You can't actually go into it. There are no other worlds besides this one I'm in, and also a, a small dev testing world that's not really important. And then this is the second world, which is Punto Banco Beach. There is no third world yet. At least, there is no entrance to the third world yet. The third world is Hot Shot Slots. This is not uh, the entrance to the third world. This is just a normal slot machine that you can use if I give myself tokens. And it just works automatically. And yeah, the slot machine will not actually give me anything even if I won. I haven't programmed that in yet, but I will. Do not worry. And that is it for the main hub world, really. And the next is uh, the battle arena. Actually, no, 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 not that. Uh, first, I have to show you the pause menu, which <laughs> actually I've been working on for quite a while. Um, even though none of the buttons work except for resume and settings. Resume, obviously, just it just resumes the game. However, settings, uh, you can go in here and you can uh, change some stuff. There's graphics, which you can make it full screen. Turn on and off V-Sync, turn on and off Glow, which I can show you what that looks like. Uh, the fire from Rusty's flame ability has a sort of glow to it, however if you turn the glow off, then that glow will go away. And if I turn it back on, I'll see it again. There you go. I like the glow, I'm gonna keep it on. Shadow quality, uh, that doesn't work yet, but it, it eventually will. Particles, you can change that to low, and you can see that it's, uh, it's got fewer particles now. Uh, it's especially obvious with the explosion. Well, maybe not immediately obvious, but uh, let's go back to high particles. Yeah, you can, you can see the difference there. Then there is the FOV, which most third-person games don't have an FOV option, but I think it's, I think it's pretty nice. 
think it could be useful for some people. Uh, let's uh, go from 50 to 100, which, honestly, high FOVs for me uh, are kind of nauseating. I can't really handle it. I'm already, my eyes are already hurting. Uh, so let me just uh, turn that back down to 70, which is the default option. You've also got audio. I have music volume all the way down so that I can add music and post. Got sound effects volume versus volume. Uh, and then, of course, is master volume. Controls, if I go into that menu, it will soft lock my game. There's more options. Uh, you can change the difficulty, change the tech speed, and the ground indicator. Uh, the shadow uh, of your character can be a little bit hard to see at times. So if you want to be able to not be screwed over by your depth perception, then you can turn on the ground indicator, and that will actually show an indicator on the ground whenever you're on top of an object, whenever you can land on something. And hopefully you will appreciate that. Then next, there is the battle system. This is just a, a placeholder enemy, but if I touch it, it will take me to the battle arena. There are no decorations around it yet. Uh, you can also look at the, uh, the battle blocks, which are still here. I can even add in the other ones. Uh, none of these actually work yet. They look cool, though. <laughs> I like them. Also, if you pause the game, you can see that, well, first of all, uh, the characters menu actually shows you which, which character you are. So if I go to, say, Ginger, uh, it'll display Ginger there. And in fact, there are other, like, sort of skins. Okay, so if I go to, like, a different skin. It's actually just like an armor set. And you'll see that in there. It actually changes to match what you are currently playing as. Uh, but yeah, there's also uh, a whole bunch of stuff that is restricted in battle that you can't access for obvious reasons. Like, you shouldn't be able to save in the middle of a battle. You gotta finish the battle first to do that. But that's pretty much it. That's pretty much all I've made. Hope you're looking forward to seeing more of it, because I would love to make more development progression once I actually get to a stage in the game where I can make a substantial video on it. But for today, I was just mainly looking at the GameMaker build and seeing what I managed to make before it completely died. So yeah, hope you enjoyed, and uh, have a nice day.